Hello my friends, so I'm back again with another video. I just finished painting my linen cupboard and some of the projects I'll be doing today will be included in my linen cupboard update. And so I thought I would just um, kind of make this video separate and then also include it in that video too when it's finished. So I just recently went to the Dollar Tree and I found these, um, what are they called? exfoliating jute um, body scrubbers and they're really cool they actually smell really good um, if you like natural products they have a scent that sort of smells like the health food store if that makes sense like all the different essential oils and so I grabbed two I haven't been able to find um, any more truthfully at various Dollar Trees that I've been to but I decided to um, just grab these two and you'll see what I'll be doing with these shortly. And I also have these jute body scrubbers that I'd purchased a while back from HomeSense. And for my American friends, HomeSense is the same as Home Goods or like Marshalls, TJ Maxx, um, that group of companies. So these I actually don't bathe with because they actually don't dry very quickly or easily like I have to put them in a spot no, where they're near buddy. like a heat source sorry my home my kiddo is uh, home from school today so you might hear some noise in the background but yeah so I'll be using these for decorative purposes like on the door of my linen cupboard so let's get started with these two and then I'll start the show you the other project afterwards so what you're gonna need is to just open the package and like take off all the tags. And by the way, I've actually recently seen these at Sage, which is kind of cool. So they're selling them as well. So they should actually end up giving my linen cupboard a pretty nice scent as well, which is what I liked about it. Okay, so there's one. Yeah, that smells pretty cool. So it smells like a little bit like jute and then like I'm getting a peppermint kind of vibe from these. Okay, so I'm going to be adding, since these are going to just be on display in my linen cupboard, like this, kind of like this, maybe I'll separate them and put them on different door hooks or in various places in the cupboard. I'm going to be adding, um, you guessed it, Mother of Pearl buttons. So if you're new to my channel, first of all, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. I'm so happy to have you. Um, so I use Mother of Pearl in a lot of my decorating and designing. So you'll find things throughout my household with Mother of Pearl buttons, and I just love them. I have a lot of Mother of Pearl um um, utensils in the kitchen like they have mother of pearl inlay I have albums and jewelry boxes with mother of pearl buttons or tiles and various things and just always love them since I was a little girl so this is a little history on me but okay so for these two I've got two little mother of pearl buttons here um, I think these are probably these are not 20 millimeter I have other ones in my little Dollar Tree mason jar here that are 20 millimeters so I'll show you so the biggest button is 20, 20, mil, 20 millimeters, that was a mouthful. And these little ones came off of an old dress. So I really don't know what the sizing is, but probably I would say around maybe 15 millimeters because I've got some smaller ones that would be um, like around 10. So maybe around 10 millimeters or so. But I mean, it's up to you. You can use wooden buttons. You can use um, some rhinestone detail whatever suits your decor and your fancy. I've got a little bit of jute here. And so this um, is just some twine that I separated from an original strand. So the original jute strand would have had three pieces and they would have been wound together like this. I just separated them to get these individual strands. And you don't even need a needle for this. If you want to use a needle, you can. I'm not going to be sewing these onto the, um, the body scrubbers. I'm just going to 
um, hot glue them on because as I mentioned, I'm not gonna be actually bathing with these. If you're finding you're having some trouble like weaving it through the button, just keep twisting it until it kind of smooths out. And just run it through. And let's see how one round looks. That looks pretty good. I might be able to squeeze through like another loop. We can try. Okay, so I think I really like that. And here's the thing, if you wanted to, you could also use an accent color, like so how this day in, day out looks kind of like maybe black or dark gray. I also have some really dark gray um, crochet thread that you could use as well. And I use this throughout my household too. But I think for this, personally, I prefer like the jute, the natural color. And you just knot that off, cut, and now you're ready to hot glue. Watch your fingers because sometimes when you're hot gluing buttons onto things, um, of course I just did it, sometimes the glue pops through the button holes and will come through and burn your fingers, like how my thumb is on the buttonholes right now. There we go. Okay, and there's one. Okay. So I'm gonna finish the second one and then come back with the next project. Hello, so I'm back. I just finished my body scrubbers and I think they look fantastic. I love the way that they turned out and this was so easy. And as I mentioned, I'm not gonna be bathing with these, but if you purchase them and you plan on bathing with them, what I would recommend is actually sewing the buttons on and just remembering not to scrub your skin with the sides that the buttons are on, that's all. But um, also, you want to make sure you use really good quality Mother of Pearl buttons if you are going to be doing this and scrubbing your skin because if they crack, they could cut you. Um, but really good quality buttons will not. They'll usually have a really good thickness to them and can take a beating even in your washing machine. Okay, so let's move on to the next project. So I'm going to be using my jute gloves. And what I did was I threaded some dark gray embroidery floss on a fairly thick needle and this is going to be really easy um, even if you believe you can't sew I promise you will you you can you can so let's see if I've got some of the kind of mini buttons in this jar mm, no so um, let's go with some bigger 20 millimeter buttons so these buttons I'm actually not going to recommend, and I mentioned this in, an, in my previous video. Um, there are really good quality Mother of Pearl buttons that will not crack or break. You can put them in the washing machine and they will hold up really nicely. And let me see if I can find one. This would be one of the thicker buttons. And one of the thinner buttons would be this one and these are really not good quality. I purchased them on Amazon. I don't think they're for sale anymore for the same reason. I think a lot of people actually gave them some pretty terrible reviews. So again, I'm not gonna be bathing with these, which is why I'm using the thinner buttons anyway. They're just gonna be on display in my closet, my linen cupboard. 
and so that's okay but if I were going to be bathing with these I would definitely use the thicker buttons and it would be fine it would be perfectly fine again you would just have to be careful right um so let's pick two and I like the natural look of the shells too of the buttons um, so it's okay that they have like some of them have like little flaws and things of that I like that I don't mind that at all so let's see so I've got two let's put those away and all we're gonna do is just find our position here on the glove so I think um, actually Maybe somewhere there, right in what would be like the wrist area. Because these are going to be hanging in the closet, so yeah, right about there. So even if you think you can't sew, just watch how easy this is, okay? So you've got your, your really huge needle threaded here. And you're just going to hold onto your glove. And again, you can hot glue if you're not going to bathe with these, but... I'll just sew them on just in case I change my mind. Don't pull your thread all the way through, which is why I didn't knot it. And then come back through one more time so we've got a nice thick sort of line going through our buttons here. Thick stitch, I want to say. Couldn't think of the word for a second there. And go back out again the back side. Don't stitch through your glove, otherwise you'll end up closing your glove, right? Okay, there we go. So now what I'm going to do is just cut my needle off. And then take the two strands here and make a knot. This isn't how you would normally sew buttons on, but because this is for something for home decor, it's not absolutely necessary to follow sewing protocol. But you can if you want to. And then we're just going to trim off this excess. So I knotted it about three times. So it's going to stay on there. Okay, and there's one glove done. Maybe I should have done it a little bit lower. I think it came out higher than I wanted it to. Let's see. Hmm. And I'm just thinking I was supposed to put this a little lower so that I can use some hooks to clip them on and hang them in the closet. Whoops, didn't think about that. All right, let's do that on the second one then. So let's put this a little lower, like there. And when you're crafting, please do not be afraid to make mistakes. This is how you learn, right? Um, this is why I love crafting, actually. It gives me the confidence to try things in other areas of my life. So when I feel afraid in other areas of my life, I remember all the success I've had through crafting and all the ways that I've learned new things through my mistakes in crafting. Okay, there we go, I think that's better. So same thing again, we're going to cut off this strand. And I can actually pull this down to gain a better access to it. I'm left-handed, by the way, so if you guys think that I make knots in a really weird way or tie things in a really weird way, that's why. Somebody pointed that out to me in high school, that I do a lot of switching of hands and fingers when I'm tying my shoelaces, and I never noticed that before. So if things look awkward to you, that's why. Okay, and trim. And there we have it.
have it. Okay, so yeah, I think that's actually much better. All right, my friends. So I'm gonna go back now. I'm gonna remove this button. And to do that, all I'm gonna have to do is just really snip away at this little knot that I made here. I could even use my needle to pick it, but that'll take a little bit longer. There, I just cut the knot all together. Easy peasy. Okay, so let me go back and fix this, and then we'll move on to the next project. Hello, my friends. Okay, so I finished my gloves, and I fixed the button that was too high on this one. So I'm going to be hanging these on the over-the-door hook on the inside of my linen cupboard, just to give some texture and to tie in the mother of pearl buttons. And um, these will be giving a little bit of scent as well, which I thought would be lovely. And um, so these are done, and we're ready to move on to the next project. So I absolutely love these little mini mason jars from the Dollar Tree. They come in a package of two, and the price is $1.50 Canadian for two plus tax. They used to be $1.25, so I'm assuming in the U.S. they were originally a dollar for a pack of two. I don't know if prices have gone up in the U.S. as well, but here in Canada, they're $1.50 for a package of two in the province of Ontario. So I use them in my crafting, so to store things like my buttons, and even like little paper clips and um, I use them in my kitchen for not a lot of spices so much but mostly for sprinkles I'll show you guys my um, tiered tray with all of the sprinkles and things that my kiddo and I love to use in the kitchen when we're baking okay so I've cleaned and washed this jar and now I like using Vaseline on sometimes my lips before bed and then also my eyebrows yep you heard me my eyebrows so I actually have, I wouldn't say overly thick eyebrows, but my eyebrows are a good thickness, but sometimes they get wayward and they feel really dry and crunchy sometimes when I touch them. I, I don't know if I can explain that or if everybody experiences that, but I do. So I'll usually use a little bit of Vaseline on my eyebrows after I put my makeup on and what it does is it gives a little bit of sheen, adds a little bit of moisture, and then also it'll hold your eyebrows um, in, in place once you use your eyebrow um, brush. Um, so that's an option too when you're doing eyebrow care. Um, also, I was a soccer player and played um, competitive soccer, played NCAA Division One in the US, and on rainy days, just a little pro tip, um, Vaseline in your eyebrows will keep rain from beating down into your eyes. It just kind of hits your eyebrows and runs off the sides of your eyebrows, which is pretty interesting. Um, I taught that to all of my teammates and they're like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. You can use chapstick too. Um, either one. Chapstick is actually really easy when you're doing a sport as well, especially when, um, you know, it's raining. You just keep it in your equipment bag and you just put it on your, your eyebrows and you're good to go. So for this project, you'll need some Vaseline, a little bit, um, sorry, not a little bit, a little container of Vaseline or whatever size container you have. And I'm going to use a popsicle stick as my scoop. And I'm just going to transfer this to this little jar. And all this is is for aesthetics. Like, you don't have to do this. You can leave your Vaseline in the plastic container. But you'll hear me say this a lot on my video. I am not a huge fan of plastic. I am grateful for plastic because there are some things in my home that are, are made of plastic. Um, but... I just, I'm not a huge fan of it, and so I'm just transferring this Vaseline out of that jar. And this is going to go in my linen cupboard too. So it's just to kind of help pretty, pretty up my tray in my linen cupboard, my cosmetics tray. And you can use... Um, coconut oil as well it's just um, I don't like having like a food item in my in my linen cupboard um, and I prefer something like this so whenever I use like coconut oil for skincare I actually don't keep it upstairs like I have no food items in our upstairs like we have a lot of trees in this area and it attracts like I just saw a notice about um, 
little beetles that look like ladybugs, but they actually bite and infest your home, that sort of thing. So I'm just gonna push this down. You could warm this a bit and it would melt down into the jar. I'm not gonna stick my finger in there, but I'm just gonna put that there. sure I got everything out of there and anything that's left in here I'll just use over the next couple of days anything I can't scoop out of the jar and once this kind of settles down a bit like I can put it in a warm spot and the Vaseline will melt and then everything will settle into the jar nicely so I can show you that too when we're done but these are my little linen covered projects for today if you are not yet subscribed, I would love it if you would subscribe, like, and share. And please keep coming back. I'll be doing a lot of little projects, sharing about life, uh, being a single mom, going through divorce, raising a kiddo on the spectrum, and just health, wellness, and thriving. That's what we do in our household, and I would love to share that with you. Until next time, my friends, take good care and have a fabulous day. Peace. Bye. Hi there. I forgot. I had one more project that should have been included in this video and I forgot. I went upstairs and saw it and thought, okay, let me just come back and film and add it to the end. So um, this is a little storage basket I picked up from the Dollar Tree and it was $1.75 Canadian. And what caught my eye was the texture of the basket and the color. So let me take it out of the bag. It's a really pretty silvery gray. It's really nice. It's got a little sheen to it. I'm going to be honest with you guys. This basket is pretty flimsy. Um, it's, let me see if I can get a better shot. I'm going to have to move my camera back. It's pretty flimsy. Um, it's like lined with plastic on the inside. I did look at using some straw baskets, some seagrass baskets, um, you know, other um, banana leaf baskets, but the location in my linen cupboard, um, it actually kind of just made the, the space look more cluttered, but this lighter look um, worked way better than... Um, than the other options so I went with this instead and really all this is for you really can't use the handles on this they will absolutely absolutely tear out because this basket's flimsy I'm just using it in my linen cupboard to wrangle all of the loose products that I use day to day but you know don't want them just kind of floating around on the shelf so it's really kind of like a corral for all of my things so what I'm going to be doing is the same thing I did with the other items you just saw. I'm just going to be adding a little button detail right there um, to tie in with everything else. And I'll use my mop buttons. And I won't use the good quality ones. I'll use the thinner ones that I told you guys about earlier. This one's kind of cool. It's got like a little... See what I mean? Like with the little flaws there. I love that. I like it. Okay, so we'll go with this one. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It's got like a little pearl nugget on it. I'll just double check and see if there isn't anything else that might work better. And my kiddo's in the background with his leapfrog. And this is how we roll in our house. Everybody does their thing and lives life and enjoys himself. Okay, so yeah, we'll go with this one. Okay, so when you buy good quality buttons, by the way, they're not going to actually have these little flaws on them right they're going to be completely smooth like this one this came off of a garment so it's you know you can put it in the machine the the garment in the machine the washing machine and they're not going to crack or break like I was mentioning earlier and they're going to be the buttons are going to be really polished and flawless so this is one of the buttons that came in that Amazon package I was telling you where they're flimsy like this is like it's got like a little dagger right like it's like sharp Welcome and cracks easily so all right enough I'll about that so, hey buddy so with this we're going to use some jute again 
And don't worry, I will make sure that I show you how all of this turns out in the cupboard itself. Okay. Having a hard time with this one. It's a little bit thicker piece of jute. I went with a thicker piece so I wouldn't have to double it, hopefully. I go through twice. Yeah, that's fine like that. Maybe I should try one more time. Maybe, yeah. Experiment, yep. I love experimenting when I craft. I know I told you guys, like, you know, I'm like, I, I don't mind making mistakes in my crafting, and it's totally true because sometimes, well, actually, every time I'll discover a better process. So, what did I do there? Let's pull it to a smoother spot. If your jute's starting to fray, don't worry. Just pull it and it'll just, the button itself will smooth it out. Yeah, I don't think we need to go through twice. It seems like it's a little bit too thick and fuzzy. That's fine. So let's knot that off. And knot this off again. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so this basket is like plastic, okay? So it's probably gonna melt whatever this material is if I use hot glue, like hot, hot glue. So I'm gonna put the glue on here, but then I'm just gonna wave it around. Let it cool for like a couple seconds. That should be fine. Put it right in the center, like right below the stitch. Perfect, and it didn't burn through. Like if I had put hot glue, I'm pretty sure it would have literally like burned right through this thing. But there is our Dollar Tree Mother of Pearl storage basket. I'll get a better shot for you guys and show you also what the linen cupboard looks like when it's done but there's what it looks like for now. Thanks again, guys. Yeah. Take good care. Bye. Bye.